when you come off or if you go onto a cruise, you have to be able to maintain or close to it the size that you were while you were blasting up. I think that a lot of the people will, you know, young young guys are afraid to go to extremes, mm. and I don't mean with dr- I don't mean with drugs. I think that's the one thing that they want to go to extremes with, and I really don't think that that's the answer. I think you're just going to hit a ceiling, you're going to stop and plateau there, and then what are you going to have to do? You have to go even higher. Yeah. I think that one thing I learned is when you come off or if you go onto a cruise, you have to be able to maintain or close to it the size that you were while you were blasting up. Hmm. Almost like hold, hold on to that plateau while you get yourself healthy, okay. you know, maybe for eight, eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever that cruise or off time is. Hold yourself. Your composition will change. You won't have as much pop, you know, your legs or shoulders, but hold it. You know, maybe if you lose five pounds of water, okay. When you get back on, make sure you're ready to go. And you'll blast up, and then you'll jump levels. Hmm. And that's how you start moving up onto different levels. You know, like I said, we were saying I'm going to go into a cruise period till Thanksgiving. I'm gonna, my target is to hold it at 290, okay. maybe 288. 288, I'll give it to, yeah. and then I know I'll be fresh, and then I should be able to blast it to 300. Wow. Yeah, that's that. Hopefully, I mean, if all goes to plan. Sure, sure. But but I think. The first thing is a lot of these guys, they see these, you know, smaller divisions and they want to do it because it's easier, mm, like yeah. easier to get into. They can get on stage quicker. Yeah. And that's why we're not seeing crazy super heavyweights at the, at the, uh, at the amateur level anymore. Some heavyweights is pretty, pretty good, but like there's not a lot of five foot eight, five foot seven super heavyweights that we used to see, you know, in the early nineties and stuff like that. I think really the only short super heavyweight that's, making a splash right now is Nick Walker. He's, he's mm. shorter than I am. You know, he, he, I don't know what he weighed on stage, but he's close to 300 in the off season. Uh, he, he's enormous. And that's just a guy who's, you know, over, over years and years, he didn't always look like that. Um, so I just think a lot of these guys, they want to be huge. They don't want to put the work in or they don't want to like suffer as much. And there is suffering, I hate using that word because there are real people that are suffering in, in the world of disease and homelessness and stuff like that. But there's uncomfortable. They're afraid even to make themselves uncomfortable mm. over getting the food down um, and, and, and really just kind of um, working at a day by day basis, you know, where they can like, OK, we got seven meals today. Let's get them all down. Even if it's tough to do, just just get them down. Train the way you're supposed to train. I, I think a lot of people are kind of fed up. Uh, are fed into like the Instagram type thing where they have to be lean. Sure. My pictures, my pictures, right. I mean, that's a whole different subject. And I'll get into that right now. My pictures on Instagram, you know, I care about my Instagram following. They don't get as much likes as when I'm in a pre-contest phase. Sure. When I get pre-contest phase, I'm like eight weeks out and I'm looking pretty lean. Every, but we were, a lot of likes. Now it's like, what kind of poses can I put up? A side chest might look decent. A rear lat spread might look de- decent. But there's no abs and thighs going up right now. There's no side triceps going on. I don't want my stomach sticking out. Like, So <laughs> it, it, there's some very unflattering pictures that can go out when you're when you're this off-season. However, mm. it's all part of the game. And I think that a lot of young competitors nowadays are afraid of uh, going towards that because they know that they're going to get less engagement on their Instagram. Sure. And that's... That is not a longevity longevity way of really approaching the sport because you're going to have to have longer off seasons hmm. to to get to this. I don't want to be an off season right now. I have the itch to tra- uh, to get ready for a show right now, but I know I got to give it to a little bit longer so that I can. I'm competing in late t- 2020, so it's a little bit longer. I, as I say, hide in the shadows for a little bit uh, longer, and then it'll all be worth it when you start stripping down. It's like uh, delaying the gratification is what you're talking sure. about, you know. And I and I and that's like a problem with society, like as a whole, not just in bodybuilding. Uh, yeah. Instant gratification is a huge thing. They want it now. Yeah. They want it fast. And if it's not possible to get it, they'll take the next best thing that is quick. Yeah. Which you know, I I, I really notice it the most in the classic division. I just there's like I see like 
probably like 10 people in the world that are truly classic physiques and the rest are skinny bodybuilders. Yeah, there's that a lot of there's a lot of guys more. that could yeah, keep going in Block, bodybuilds, you know. Blocky blocky waist guys that are just light body weight that can make the classic uh height and weight requirements, but they should they don't have a business being there. So it's um they should just wait in the in the off season longer. And I think that we used to see that back in the day because guys would wait from competing until it was time to do it. Hmm. And yeah. I think nowadays people are getting into it very soon. I think that competing is the hip thing to do. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where, what division it is. It's an attention thing. Whereas with me, like competing is like a life or death thing for me. So hmm. it's like, it, it's not an attention thing. I don't care if I ever get on stage and there's nobody there. Hmm. I still will prep for it. And I still will do it. What do you mean? Tell, tell, tell me a little bit more about that a life or death thing. It's um, it's like the end of the world if I don't do what I'm expected to do. And when I mean by what I'm expected to do, I mean personally. I wrote that diet down on a damn piece of paper, and that's yeah. what it's going to happen. Okay. I have this thing. like If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I'm going to follow through on what I promised. And that's like an accountability thing that I have. Yeah. And so it's, you know, if I said, if I said I'm going to compete at the 2020 North Americans, Pending that I'm not injured or dead, I'm going to be at that show. Okay. It's not like I, 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 I made a promise to myself that I'm going to do it and I'm going to do the best I can to get there. And it's the same way with the daily regimen of eating, training. I don't switch. And this is like a Dorian Yates mindset. I just watched a video on it. It's a mental challenge. Yeah. If it snows, if it snows, I won't switch my training day. Uh, to the next day or something that's a little bit more convenient. If it was supposed to be on Wednesday, I'm going on Wednesday. Yeah. And, and even if, even if Thursday's off because I, it's just a thing. I can't let anything distract me from that is the first priority. I'm focusing on that and that's, what's going to get completed. And once I complete it, then we just, it's checked off for the day and then whatever where the next meals are, this is the next meal. Just do it. So I just feel like don't, I don't like when people convenience themselves mm. for bodybuilding. I think that when you convenience it, it means that other things are taking priority and that's not how I handle it. Mm.